everyone. Welcome to the Selling Smarter Show, where we help business owners and sales pros sell smarter using LinkedIn. My name is Nicole Hoagland, and I'm your host. And in today's episode, we're going to talk with Robert Friedman about how having the right branding can actually help you sell better. Robert is the founder and CEO of Fearless Branding and has over more than 30 years of experience in the marketing industry. Robert started his company because he saw a better way to help businesses build their brands and create meaningful, lasting experiences for their customers. Welcome to the show, Robert. We're really excited to have you on today. Thanks, Nicole. It's great to be here. Awesome. So the reason I wanted to bring Robert on is because I think a lot of people don't understand the importance of branding when it comes to helping you sell your business. A lot of people think that having a logo or a tagline is simply what branding is and that's it. But there's so much more to it that if you position it correctly and figure out what type of content can convert your prospects into clients, whether that's using your website or your social media, can really help move them through the process and easily have them saying yes to what you want to offer and branding plays a crucial part in this. So Robert, I'd love to get your thoughts on why you know branding actually matters when it comes to helping you sell your business. Yeah, thanks Nicole. So um, you said some interesting things and I'll, I'll start with a, a phrase that I've been using recently, which is your brand is everything right? So it is not just your name or your tagline or even your website or content, right? It is every experience that you have internally within your company or organization, but also your customers. Anybody who knows anything about your business is experiencing it via the lens of the brand. And if you are intentional, you can decide what you want it to stand for and how you want it to connect with the world. And in particular, I mean, we, we both work with service firms. So in particular, those prospects that could be a great fit for you, we want them to understand as quickly as possible what your real value is so that they get it. They can then engage in a conversation with you um, to sell, right? And then they're starting with an understanding of the real value you provide. And that's really the job of a brand. Mm -hmm. And what I like about what you said too, it's not just, it, it, the brand is everything, but on top of that, it's being really concise and clear about what you want to say very quickly. And I think a lot of times people get confused and thinking that they have to say everything in a very out of the realm type of way that doesn't necessarily engage with their prospects because it's what they feel they need to say as opposed to what they want their clients to actually feel and think. Right. That is such a good point, Nicole. So there's this saying, I think it's from Mark Twain. Um, if I had more time, I would have made it shorter. <laughs> Right. Like he was writing this letter and it's like, and he just basically said it was 10 pages or whatever. And if I had more time, I would have written you a shorter letter. So that's the thing. We have a lot, right? Like all of these businesses are complex. We have a lot to say and to explain. Right. But if we throw it all out there, people are going to get overwhelmed and they're going to get confused. And so that's why, I mean, in, in many ways, branding is hard, right? Because you really have to boil the ocean and you have to figure out what's, what's your starting place, what's the core essence of that value, and then how does that connect with who your prospect is or your client and what they really need, and what's the right sequence to deliver that information because if you put it all out there at once, it's too much. Mm -hmm. So what would you say would be some really helpful tips for people who are just getting started with this and kind of seeing branding in a different perspective now um, to help them be concise, but also realize that everything that they're doing reflects back on them? Right. Well, I don't know that I would put this in the category of a helpful tip because that makes it sound like it's going to be easy. <laughs> but what I would say is when you can define your brand around one main thing, that that then becomes the central organizing principle for everything you say and do in your business. And when you have that and you know it's super important to you, it's super important to your audience, and you start there, right? And so one of the main things that I believe is that 
that needs to be based not only on what you do, but on who you are, like what you stand for, your principles, not just the, the nuts and bolts of your product or service. So when you can find that core truth, that is, that's the thing that you need to lead with. Mm -hmm. what, tell me more on that. Um, what, what would be an example of that, Robert? You know, perhaps a client you've worked with or, um, you know, especially those that are selling a service, you know, can, can you give us an example of that? Yeah, so I'm going to start with um, with a brand that everybody knows. I'm going to talk about Apple for a minute, and then I'll, I'll give you an example in the service realm, right? So um, probably my favorite story around using this principle is Apple. So Steve Jobs founded Apple, but then about 10 years later, he got fired. And then about 10 years after that, the company almost went into bankruptcy. This is in 1997. It, it's hard to imagine now, but it almost went under, right? So in that moment, um, the big people that everybody aspired to were Dell and IBM. And so um, all they were focused on mostly was how the computers worked, right? How fast they were, or how modular they could be, or how quickly they could ship it to you. And so... <clears throat> Apple needed to turn themselves around. They wanted anybody to do it but Steve Jobs, but they ran out of options. And so they, they hired him to, or they allowed him to come back to say, okay, let's turn the ship around. So the first thing that he did was he said, okay, we've got we've to gotta pay some attention and give some love to the Apple brand. But the way to do it is not to talk about speeds and feeds and bytes and megahertz and why our company is, why our uh, product is better than Windows. He said, what our customers really want to know is who is Apple, what do we stand for, and where do we fit in this world, right? They're, they're nothing about like specs on the computer. Mm -hmm. And so the way he answered that is he said, Apple at its core, our core value is that people with passion can change the world for the better. And this was like a very specific moment in time. This was at the moment that he introduced the Think Different campaign mm. to his team and then ultimately the world, right? And so he was showing, you know, so basically, I think it's Steve Jobs who talks about like, you don't want to borrow, you want to steal. So he showed... Um, Martin Luther King and Gandhi and Einstein and all these geniuses, right? And basically he was taking what Apple stood for and, and getting, you know, like on the backdraft of these geniuses, right? And so these are people who created something out of nothing, whether it's art or technology or, or science or political movement. And so what he's saying in that message or what Apple says is, if you join our tribe, this isn't just about a computer. You can be a creative genius and change the world too, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's all about like uh, creating something out of nothing, that creative genius thing. And what's so brilliant and interesting is, so number one is I firmly believe, and we can have a longer conversation about this, is that that's the thing that took the company from almost bankrupt, like just the stock chart, right, to the most valuable business on the planet. They were like at 50, like today's dollars, 58 cents to $364, right? So like 62,000% increase. We should have bought the stock, right? Um, so that's the that's the heart of what drives it, right? Of course, it's the, the products and the experience, but it was that one insight that drove everything. And I don't know if you guys have seen the, um, there's a brand new commercial, COVID, um, for Apple, and it's about this team that um, 
basically they have this freely mean boss, very demanding, doesn't want to pay attention to them. And they have to like solve this incredible problem. They have to design a product for a client and they're, you know, sitting in their apartments and trying to like do all this stuff in their bathrobes. But it's the same thing. They have to like, they're creative geniuses. Like how it's like some kind of packaging thing that they have to invent from nothing and completely revolutionize it. And so, and the point I want to make is that it is the same strategic idea of creative genius creates something out of nothing. This is what we will help you do. This is the gift that we have to give you. Hmm. So that's really what all of our businesses can do, right? It's like it's this core emotional truth that gives a gift to our best clients so I know that, sorry, that was a long story, but <laughs> no, uh, no, as you can tell, I'm so, you know, focused on how do I help clients find that one thing that then drives everything for decades and decades and builds value. Well, and I think a point to make too is that it's not just, it's about that core truth and it's about getting the message out there, but it's also figuring out how that truth can speak to each and every single ideal client without it necessarily having to be a different message each and every single time. And what Apple did was they were able to pull these, these, these ideal people to actually elevate their brand for people to allow to choose who they responded to that elevated them to a point where people really bought into what they wanted to do. Right, right. Totally agree. I mean, that's really a key point is that you want to have this truth that is applicable no matter what your segment is at any given time, right? Are we talking about a phone? Are we talking about a computer, right? Are we talking about, you know, iBooks or music or whatever? It doesn't matter because the principle is the same. So the thing about it is, though, so you said ideal client, and there is a, an emotional and psychographic way to define that, right? It's not only people who, you know, are in a particular industry or a particular position type or whatever. It's people who believe what you believe, and maybe they haven't defined it as clearly as you have as the owner of the brand, but by articulating what you believe, then people could see, oh yeah, that resonates with me, and they're nodding their head, and then they can they can join the tribe, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just like we're doing right now. <laughs> yeah. So um, you had said that you were going to give the example of Apple, and then give an example of more of a service based business for those who are watching that don't necessarily have a product. So I would love to know what that example is. Right. Okay. Um, quick question. Uh, I could actually even show you. Um, do you want mm -hmm. me to show you an example? Yeah, a absolutely. There? You can share your screen. So this is a, um, a recent project, actually a recent update uh, to a project. So a few years ago, I worked with a client. His name is Brian Truett, and he's an insurance guy. And he focuses on uh, providing insurance in a very compre comprehensive way to high net worth individuals and their families. And when we started working together, he was focused really just on going straight to those clients. And his story was good, but pretty much the same as any other broker who would, um, who would focus on a similar market. What, when we started working together, there were two key insights. Number one is that the way he approached it, I mean, like the, the typical perception of an insurance person is, I'm here to sell you something basically, a little pushy, a little salesy. And what Brian's focus is not that at all. It's a really deep analysis, maybe a little complex in the beginning, certainly potentially complex to the client, right? Then we had the insight that all of these people with a, with a net worth above you know, a certain level, a couple million dollars, they're going to have an advisor, right? And number one, that advisor is responsible for that client's full wealth uh, picture. And number two, that advisor wants to keep that client's wealth as opposed to lose that client's wealth, right? So if there are um, losses like your house burns down or, and I'm gonna to go to an internal page, for example, as a client 
So the insight that we had is that as clients build their wealth, their risk goes up. Right, so they're doing all these things. They're 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 adding fancy kitchens in their houses, and they're and they're hiring lived-in help. And each one of those things, even though the client isn't thinking about that, like these are just great things, is increasing the magnitude of their risk. Right. So if you have a nanny and they're driving your car and they hit somebody, right? God forbid, and there's a lawsuit. Are you properly insured to cover that nanny because she's doing that work under your employee? Are you completely covered in that eventuality, right? So the strategy was to focus not on the client, but on the financial advisor to do a deep dive to really understand the, the details of that client's financial situation, right? So, um, and then what we added is we realized, so the target market actually for my client is the financial advisor as opposed to the end client. Mm -hmm. And so we, uh, we developed an additional line of business focused on those same financial advisors because their businesses are complex and they have a complex uh, uh, portfolio of insurance needs as well. And so we created a... Um, kind of a mnemonic here to to uh, the metaphor of a jigsaw puzzle to talk about the specific pieces. So the one thing here is analysis, right? So the one word, like Apple is creative, my word is fearless. For this particular client, his one word is analysis or analytical. And everything is about creating the understanding among the the best fit client and referral source in this case, uh, financial advisors, that the depth and quality of the analysis is going to be superior to any, to, to competition, but, and so valuable, but we have to frame that because it's not what the, the financial advisor is going to be expecting. Right. So this is an example of, you know, even though that's kind of like a, a headspace, right. It's less, of a heart brand, it's more of a head brand, but it's still the core idea of what this business is all about and how to communicate that. Mm -hmm. Yep, and it breaks it down in a really easy way for the prospect to understand from the very beginning what they're going to get as opposed to having to dig and read and kind of maybe um, figure out what their own interpretation is. It is extremely clear and straightforward so they can know exactly what they can expect when they get to the point where they want to talk to him. Right, right, mm -hmm. exactly. And so that's um, a really important point, right? Because you've got to get the basic stuff communicated first, right? Like, what is this company? What do they do? And who are we talking to here, right? And so the viewer, the reader should be, should be able to see very clearly, like, do I fit in this? Yep, this is for me. They're talking right to me. Um, analytical, financial advisors, my clients, if that's for me, great. If not, it's okay, right? But we want to focus on the people that it's for. Mm -hmm. um, are there any, like, things that, like, business owners or whatnot, as they're figuring out what that like core, core truth is for them, um, they should be asking themselves, like there, are there any certain questions that they should be um, allowing themselves to kind of figure out so they can get to that answer, maybe not necessarily quicker, um, but without it being too complicated? Yeah. So the basic questions are, so where I always start with a client when I do um, what I call brand vision, which is a brand strategy project. I just want to know what do you want, right? And then there's there's two key components. I call it money and meaning. So we want to make money, but for most of us, it's not the only thing we want. We want to make a contribution and we, we, we want to provide value in the world, not just make money. But a lot of it is just where do you want to take your business? What are your revenue goals? And are you, you know, the the clients that I work with typically want to grow. Um, so how do you want to grow if you know? What are the key strategies? So it could be that you want to work with so kind of a very few basic things to ask. You want more clients, but do you want them to be pretty much the same as who they are right now? Do you want better clients, 
So that could be just bigger clients, right? Like bigger budgets as an example, or maybe you want clients that are really going to like let you do your real work as opposed to kind of um, they're more in control. So are any of these things um, up for you basically? So it's like more clients, better clients, more profit. Which one of those buckets is up for you as you're thinking about your growth, right? Then that gives you a, um, a way in to the other side, which is on the client side, right? So how do you match that up with, do you, who do you need to be talking to? Do you need to be talking to perhaps different people than you're talking to now, right? Like if you want to up-level your clientele, you have to decide, you have to ask yourself the question, who are we really talking to and then what do they need, right? And how do we get those needs defined so we can match it up with our offers and the value we're delivering? Mm -hmm. and that's a place to start, really. It's just like, just start with the numbers and then start like, how are you going to hit that number? And then, so brand strategy really is a way to like put the, put the puzzle pieces together to help you get what you want. Mm -hmm. Would you say that there's anything that, business owners should avoid as, like in the terms of like, not necessarily mistakes, but maybe pitfalls as they're figuring this out for themselves? Yeah, well, the, I would say one of the biggest pitfalls is you get attracted to the shiny object, right? Like I call it jumping to the tactic. So I have this friend who used to work for this huge branding agency and she said, everybody wants the ice cream, but nobody wants the cone. Right. And it's like, if you don't have the cone, it's like, you just have a scoop of ice cream. It's just going to get messy and gooey. So mm -hmm. bottom line is like, don't get seduced by whatever, like that latest trend is, you know, like, Oh, let's get on Instagram or let's, you know, like whatever. Right. Or some, some little trick on, you know, social media or on your website or whatever, just like really, that is the hugest pitfall that you jump into the tactics without having the essence of the core story. And then they wonder like, well, why is my marketing not as effective as I want it to be? And it's because they haven't done this foundational work. Mm -hmm. awesome. awesome. I have a question. You mentioned story. You know, we've been hearing a lot about the power of story and uh, story brand and Donald Miller and things like that. And can you touch on that? Uh, sure. Perhaps, you know, for small businesses out there, how they might want to integrate story into their content or into their messaging. Right. Yeah. So the piece of like story brand that I completely agree with, I think is just that it's humans we are wired to tell and to understand stories, right? Like uh, it's a big way of how we make sense of things. Like why, you know, like think about the Greek myths. It's like, why is that mountain over there? And they like made, you know, they, they didn't really know, but they made stuff up, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> the way that I combine what we talked about earlier, like finding your idea with story is that that core idea is the jumping off point for you as a brand owner to be able to tell your story in a way that you control, right? Your intention of how you want to define it to the audience that cares. And, you know, I think the, the point about story is we are attracted to conflict and we're attracted to kind of like this classic journey of like, you've got somebody, but they have a problem. And then there's this big obstacle, but they still have to overcome it, right? Like, mm -hmm. how did they get there? And you want to know, right? And then if the person who's hearing it is identifying this, so like, oh, my God, that's just like me, right? That's the piece of the storytelling and branding that could be so effective. Because if you can define, tell a story, but then have the people who are listening to it in a way that they're thinking like, oh, I can see myself. In, in the shoes of that other client you're talking about, like, wow, that's like, I got to talk to them because they help them do it. Then one of the key things that uh, Donald Miller talks about is that the story is really the client story, right? Like whoever you're helping, they're the hero. 
you're the guide, right? You had, you know, the map, the, you know, the tool, whatever it may be that helped that client basically get to whatever it is. I mean, I always think like there's the knight who went out in search of the Holy Grail, right? He left his mother's home and, you know, he went on his journey and he had lots of obstacles to find until finally he finds Excalibur and he does the thing, right? It's like, yes. but that's what we all have to do as business people every day. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And I, lo I, I love Donald Miller, how he explains that. And I love your simplicity in that. But at the end of the day, it's true. The, as a business, if you have a story where you can um, take people on a journey and you be the solution as opposed to being the hero, it'll make so much of a difference in how you're able to show other people what you do as opposed mm -hmm. to just stating what those services or products are. And it, it engages them better. Yeah, there's one thing I want to mention about that whole framework, which maybe is implicit, but I don't actually hear them talk about it. So when I do brand vision, there's there's three key pieces, right? There's the, the internal, like your company. Then there's the external, like your clients. But there's one more piece, which is what's the marketplace? Who are the competitors, right? So... One thing that I don't hear um, story brand talk a lot about is like they talk about that that story and that hero's journey, but if you are saying something that is so true, but it's true for your competitors, then you could fall into the trap, into the pitfall of you just sound like everybody else. Is it right? Yes, it is, right? But is anybody going to pay attention to it? Probably not. Right. And so that's where the, the branding really comes in is you have to look at a couple of things is what is everybody else saying? But then how do you define two things, who your audience is? Usually what I find with my clients is what we have to do is slice their target market more narrowly. We have to focus on a segment that they can really own. And then we have to look at what we do and figure out what are we doing that's different than any anybody else in our space. If we're a CPA, how are we doing our work in any kind of different way that we can connect with the audience so that we can create the, um, the differentiation that we need to actually have people pay attention? Mm -hmm. Well, and I think it, to add to that too, the differentiation also has to be valuable enough for that prospect and client to understand that that truly is what makes you different. Because if it's not valuable to them, they may not see that as something that the competition doesn't have, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And that's such a good point. And um, so one of the other pitfalls that people can fall into is, well, there's two pitfalls. One is to identify something as a differentiator that you think is so different, but it's really not. Like, what makes you different? Oh, our people are so committed, right? Like, we have, like, the, the highest quality people, and it may be true, right? And maybe they are more committed, but nobody is going to believe that, right? So that's pitfall number one. Pitfall number two is you come up with something and it is truly differentiated, but it's kind of made up and it's like wacky and it's not relevant to, to the prospects. Like you said, it doesn't really give them any value for what they need. And so, yeah, it's differentiated, but just, you know, it's like I, I came out of um, the background of big advertising agencies and there was just so much stuff where people were like, well, what can we do that's like really wacky that will grab somebody's attention and maybe it'll grab their attention, but if it's not really relevant to their business problem, it will make a difference in the long term. Mm -hmm. Good point. Awesome. Well, I have really enjoyed talking with you today um, and pulling out what I think is going to be um, really good insights for our audience who listen to the Selling Smarter Show and watch us. So I want to first thank you so much for um, dedicating your time to us today. Um, but where can our audience find you if they have more questions or um, want to potentially learn more about what you do and how maybe you can help their business? Sure. Um, so they can go to fearlessbranding.com. Uh, they can reach out to me at robert at fearlessbranding.com. And what I would uh, suggest is that they take my brand strength assessment. It's on my website. 
Um, you can just pop in your email and, and we'll send it to you or you can send me uh, an email to robert at fearlessbranding.com and I'll send it over. And it's a series of 20 statements that basically take you from vision to exit um, with everything in between about um, what your positioning and how are you telling your story and how effective are your sales um, to rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 so that we can help you diagnose could your brand be stronger? Would it help you to grow your business? And where? what are the areas where you might want to improve? Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Robert. Um, and thank you to everyone watching. I would highly recommend doing that assessment um, to really get to the nuts and bolts of your brand. Um, and hopefully on today's episode, you not only learned what branding is, which is everything for your business, um, but that we were able to help change your perspective on how you're able to build a better brand to help you sell smarter. I'm Nicole Holgland, and thank you for watching this episode. And remember, don't sell harder, sell smarter. Mm -hmm.